Welcome to the A to Z of licensed games, a series of vids about games that take something from something else. As I said at the end of the last video, the letter E is where things get a little sparse. There ain't really much to choose from here, and what's here is, well, a pretty wagtag bunch. My original aim for the list was to have an A to Z that featured only good licensed games, but uh, well, I just couldn't, uh, couldn't be done. And this was the first stumbling block. So in the absence of anything that's truly good enough to be featured, we must focus on what's actually interesting. Which means I get to talk about one of the most ambitious licensed games ever made, Enter the Matrix. A game that tried to do so much out of the ordinary, but ultimately failed in a pretty big way. It's not a good game. Hell, it's frankly far from good. But it is at least intriguing. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but no one really talks about The Matrix anymore, do they? The film was ridiculously big in 1999. Tons of movies ripped it off, the trench coat industry got a much needed spike in sales, people climaxed at the sight of cellular phones that flipped, and 9 out of 10 14 year olds were going into AOL chat rooms and naming themselves Neo Walls Blue Pill 69. But it seems to be all gone now, even when other things that were big with the young crowd in the late 90s still survive, even thrive. It seems as though no one, not even nerds, care about The Matrix in 2013. I blame Keanu Reeves, personally. Anyway, the film's 2003 sequel, Matrix Reloaded, was hotly anticipated and also a big seller. Say what you will about it, but $750 million ain't to be sniffed at. In the early noughties, the idea of synergy was starting to become a bit of a buzzword, especially as marketing knuckleheads tried to get their skulls around this whole new internet thing. No one really had a clue how to do it yet. Maybe they still don't. Two other products were released with it that were important, even necessary, in order to get the full story of the movie. The first was the Animatrix, a series of cartoon shorts released to DVD, and the second was Enter the Matrix, a video game published by Atari and developed by the bots at Shiny, released on the same day as the film. Neither of these offshots, or to tell the truth the film itself, are particularly well remembered. Enter the Matrix follows two of Reloaded's more minor characters, Ghost and Niobe. They basically exist in the movie, so they can be featured in the game. The game comes with a good hour and a half's worth of scenes that expand on their story, and a few levels in this game are based on things you noticeably don't see in the movie. Big shootouts that are only alluded to in the movie, but featured in full here. The thing to remember about Enter the Matrix is that it is not your average time that simply repeats scenes you know from the movie. This is an addition to the movie, a story one in concurrently with another story on another platform. Yeah, there wasn't much like it around at the time, and truth be told it is an interesting idea, however it failed for several reasons. The first, and most obvious one, is that people didn't want to play as these supporting characters, they wanted to play as Neo. They wanted the freaking burly brawl and they didn't get it, and so the fans were annoyed. Shiny understood this and the game's sequel rectified the issue, maybe we'll cover that later on. Secondly, and this goes for the whole project, all this cross-platform shit kinda shut out anyone not already interested in The Matrix. There was a big enough fanbase to sustain the series, but anyone who didn't have much love for The Matrix would be completely nonplussed by a film that also requires you to watch a DVD and play a game in order to get the whole picture. And so the non-fans were annoyed. The third and final reason is that the game is, well, kinda flawed. Enter the Matrix was clearly rushed to hell in order to make sure it was released the same day as the film. A classic and all too common problem amongst times, but one that you'd think wouldn't happen here, considering how important this game apparently was and how different it was supposed to be. The action isn't all that bad, beating people up is nice and so is shooting. You can pretty much do all the Matrix type things from diving around and firing guns to kicking goons into the middle of next week. But it's only fun for so long. Stages are just a little lifeless, with very few background details. So much of the game appears to be just made up of corridors. The animation is comic in parts, especially the one in, and the AI doesn't help matters here. The camera is basically broken, it shifts about so much trying to get the best angle for fights that it ends up going do lally. 
and the controls are just ridiculous sometimes, you always end up getting stuck on things or triggering first person view when you don't want to. And the game was bugged to hell on release, so much so that a second version of the game had to be released. The game sold well, but buyers were not impressed, and The Matrix's prospects as a video game franchise, perhaps where its heart had always been, never quite recovered. You know, it's funny really. Another reason why this game failed is that a lot of what it tried to do had already been done. When we already had Max Payne, we didn't have much need of Enter the Matrix. And so, yeah, that's the story pretty much. The game is sort of fun for a while if you play it in a Matrix style, don't hide away, dive full on into enemies and the like, but it's only ever so fleeting. But it is a somewhat interesting failure. I hesitate to call a lot of these honourable mentions, they're more like, well, plain Jane everyday mentions. Some are okay and some are, well, you'll see. And yes, there will be a shit room title. Anyway, the best licensed game beginning with the letter E that I played was Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, an adventure game for the Amiga. This game is by Horrorsoft, a company that's also famous for the likes of Personal Nightmare and Waxworks. They make these first person dungeon crawlerish games that usually feature a lot of thoroughly gruesome deaths and are hard as hell, and this is not an exception. If you know the likes of, say, Shadowgate, then you'll have a better understanding of the form. I'm absolutely terrible at these games, but if this appeals to you, then definitely give it a go. I also had a look at Evil Dead Regeneration for the PS2, a 3D action title where you take Ashley Williams for a spin around a mental asylum, shotgun, chainsaw and all. Bruce Campbell's here and he delivers his lines in a typically one, iconically lazy way that makes you wonder if he's truly into it or just here for some beer money, but it doesn't matter much because it's Bruce Campbell, and Bruce Campbell's awesome. Aside from that, the game itself is kinda repetitive, a 3D beat-em-up with no variation to speak of in the combos or any reason to do much aside from the one attack that'll keep you sweet for just about the whole game. Pretty bleh. Speaking of Evil Dead, here's a game based on the original movie for the Commodore 64. I don't really get it. It seems to me that you pick up items and then I suppose you use them to kill enemies, but whenever I try to do that I end up losing energy, though occasionally I gain energy. Is it based on colour? Perhaps. To tell you the truth, it didn't exactly grab me enough for me to care. Speaking of games that don't really grab me, here's X Mutants on the Mega Drive, a platformer based off a cult comic book. It's... okay. I wish I could say more about it, but everything about it is quite middle of the road. Average graphics, average gameplay, music, the lot. It may hold your attention for about 15 minutes, but there are so many better action games on the system, why would you play this when you could play, I don't know, Shinobi 3? And finally, a game that defies all attempts at description or reason. It's EastEnders on the ZX Spectrum. Yes, it's a game based off a soap opera, and it's horrific. So why is it not the shit room title? Well, because it's incredibly weird. A complete failure in every respect, but a failure like no other I have ever seen. It appears to be a collection of utterly inane mini-games, prune the plants at the allotment, collect washing at the laundrette, a taxicab stroke maze game, feed a baby, just what the hell? You appear to play as a giant and the houses are all coloured boxes with no indication of what they are. The game just completely boggles the mind. It's one of the worst games ever released for the Spectrum, and you may well have an idea of just how damned in a statement that is. But it's terrible in a way that completely screws with my head, I can't make it out at all. And so it's here just in case you want to experience it for yourself. Good luck, you'll need it. Our shit room title is something that's still quite weird, but is also a lot more conventional, and it takes us once more into Amiga territory. Ed the Duck isn't even the craziest example of a children's TV mascot game on the Amiga, but we'll get to that later. Ed the Duck, by the way, was a puppet mallard who often showed up in the BBC studios to make children laugh and annoy parents nationwide. Usually he just showed up in the links between cartoons. He was popular, I suppose, but forever in the shadow of the likes of Basil Brush. Less anarchic, more designed by committee, a true symbol of John Burt's reign as the Director General. Okay, I think I've lost about everyone with that sentence, so let's look at the game. Now how do I best describe it? 
Imagine if Rainbow Islands was sent to Guantanamo Bay and tortured for a couple of years before being released back out into the wild, only to be hit in its confusion by a passing lorry. That said the duck. The jumping tries so much to be like Rainbow Islands, but fails due to being hilariously stiff and impossible to control. It tries to be bright and colourful, but only succeeds at being dull and derivative. The enemy placement quickly irritates due to how juddery the scrolling is, resulting in plenty of cheap deaths, and collecting all of these stars is just boring. There's no fun at all to be had here. I've played many platformers in my time, and I'm struggling to think of one that's quite as unfun as this game is. However, despite its pure uncut shittiness, the game did get a sequel. Ed the Duck 2, back with a quack! Amiga Power gave it 3%, which even for them was an absolutely brutal score. And it's not hard to see why, as the game is just a complete and utter load of nothing. It doesn't whip off Rainbow Islands, and the controls are actually better this time around, but the game's just got nothing going for it. A platformer with dull graphics, no music, and colossally mundane collect shit gameplay. Compared to the likes of James Pond, it was a ludicrous, unfunny joke. Basically, the game did to CBB's Game Times what Noel Edmonds did for safe bungee jumping. There, that's it. End of. And with that, the letter is in the books. F is next, and alas, the drought continues. More thoroughly average titles coming up. But I'll find something that'll entertain you, even if it's just me doing the last turkey in the shop in front of the camera for five minutes. But if you don't want me to do that, then you'd better hope I get some good ideas. Until then, however, thanks for watching, and wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time.